Hey guys, so last time we made this little HTML program that allows us to draw a maze. So the gray boxes are empty spaces and the blues are walls and we're able to click and drag our mouse and draw walls. So uh, we can make a maze and the green in the top left is the start position and the red in the bottom right is the end position. So so far that's all that our program does. Um, if you watch the last video. So that, that allows us to set this up. And what we want to do in this video is to actually solve the maze. So the last time this was the HTML, what I want to do is change this a little bit and add to it. So we had a width of 1200 and a height of 800 for our canvas, but we didn't use all of that. So I'm going to change this to a width of 1000 and a height of 600. That won't actually change anything in the program at all, so if I open that back up, uh, there's some blank canvas here that, well, that's not here that was there before, but you can't see it, so it doesn't really make a difference. Okay, and next what I want to do is let's go to a new line, so I'm going to add a line break, and we're going to add in a couple of buttons so that we can press a button to solve the maze and press a button to reset. So let's see, button on click equals, and we're going to add a new method called solve maze. And let's just have this button say solve. Okay, so pretty simple. And then we'll add another button on click will equal, uh, let's do reset. Okay, and we'll have it say reset. Oops, trouble typing there. All right, and then uh, we'll also have a little bit of output, so I'm going to put uh, outcome, I think, a uh, paragraph that's just going to be empty. So if we can't solve the maze, we have a place to have a message put out that says this maze can't be solved or something along those lines. Okay, so what does that look like? All right, we've got a couple of buttons. Uh, they don't do anything right now, of course. So all we've got to do is make those two functions. So what we're going to do is just now start changing our JavaScript file, and we need to add the solve maze and reset functions. Okay, so first we're going to create the reset function, and what we want that to do is reset all the tiles. So we're going to run through the tiles and set everything to empty again, except the start and the finish. So I'm going to copy this and then create uh, right above my initialize function a new function reset, which will reset the tiles. Okay. So we can go ahead and check that out. So we draw some kind of maze here, reset, and the tiles get reset. So that's nice, that just clears everything. That was the easy part. Now we've got to make it actually solve the maze. Um, but before I do that, maybe one more easy thing. We want to create a variable that controls the output. So at the top, let's put a variable. Uh, which we'll call output. And then we want to initialize this, so let's go to our init function. And we want to say output equals document dot get element by ID. Oops, okay. And what did I call that? Paragraph um, outcome. This is the outcome. And whenever we reset everything, we're going to want to reset whatever the output was. So output.inner HTML equals an all stream. Great. So that'll take care of that. Once it changes, uh, it's already ready to be reset. The last thing to do is to write the function 
solid maze, I think it was. Let's go over here and double check. The function is solve maze. Okay. So if you go back a couple of videos, you'll see the pathfinding algorithm that I introduced, and that's the algorithm we want to implement here, um, beginning from the start. So what we're going to do is create a couple of queues that store the cells that we need to check. Uh, all right. Let's see. So we're going to create a variable x queue, um, which will start with zero, and the variable y queue, which will also start with zero. So you can do this with one queue. I'm creating two queues just to keep things simple. It's uh, the x queue keeps track of the x coordinates, and the y queue keeps track of the y coordinates of the places we've explored, or that we're now exploring from. So we want to begin at the start, and the start is at zero zero. So we want to begin here, just like in the pathfinding algorithm. I started exploring from the start place. And now we want to check in all four directions. So the way the graph is structured is that everyone has its neighbors uh, above, below, and to the left and to the right, unless they're on the edge of the, uh, the maze, in which case they don't have a neighbor to some direction if there's no neighbor to that side. Okay, so let's create a variable, which I'll call path found, which will equal false, that will also keep track whether or not we've actually found the path to the finish. And of course, we'll set this to true if we found an answer. And then I'm going to create an xy coordinate pair that will represent where we are currently exploring from. So a variable our x location and a variable which is our y location. And now we're going to explore while the xq dot length is bigger than zero. So as long as there's some place to go exploring, we're going to keep exploring until we run out of options and uh, while we've not found a path. So I'm going to set and not path pound. Okay, and what we want to do is get the next values from our xq and yq. So the x location is going to be xq.shift and the y location is yq dot shift. So the first time it runs through the loop, path found is false, and the length of xq is 1, meaning that there is one point, uh, 0, 0, that we want to check. So we're going to check around 0, 0. That will set the x location and the y location where we're currently exploring at 0, 0. And then if the x location is bigger than 0, so that it's not on the edge, we can check to the left of it. So um, if to the left of it, that would be tiles at x loc minus 1. So go left 1, and you stay at the same y level, so the same height. That state is equal to empty. Oh, uh, sorry, no, let's say finish. Let's first check and see if we're done. Um, well, since for right now, uh, well, to be complete, we'll go ahead and include this, although there is no tile to the left of the finish, um, but we'll just go ahead and do this for completeness in case you want to ever change where the finish and start are located on the maze. So we'll set path found equals true. So we did find a way to the finish. Okay, and that's all we need to do is set uh, path found equals true. Sorry, I tend to ramble and then cut some of that rambling out. So it's not as bad as it would be if I just left it all in. Um, okay. And then we also want to check to the right. So tiles at x look plus one y look dot state is equal to finish. We'll set path bound equals true. And we're going to do similar for the y's. So let's just copy and paste this. Oh, um, we have to be a little careful here. I shouldn't have stuck that in here. This is if x location is bigger than 0. But if I run this on the edge, it's going to cause a problem. So really what I want to do is set that in uh, if x look is less than um, tile column count minus 1. So remember, that's uh, 
how many X positions there are. So if I'm not on the very edge, at least I'm one away from the very edge, then I can check one to the right. So. We go now then we want to take these two and do the same for the y's so where it says x look i'll replace it with y look and instead of x look minus one it's going to be y look minus one and x look plus one should be y look plus one and instead of tile column count we need to put tile row count so if i were to run that We still don't see anything happening really um, because so far the only explores from the start and it's going to look down and it's going to look right and I won't see a finish. Next thing to do is have it explore all of its neighbors. So um, it now has looked up, down, left, right to see if it's next to a finish and if not, well whether it is or isn't actually isn't a big deal. Um, We want to run a similar type of code that's going to see if the cell is empty. So if it's empty on any side, then we want to explore there too. And the graph, the pathfinding algorithm on the graphs, uh, this is whenever it assigns numbers to its neighbors. So it might get a number three, and then it will say six, seven, eight are all next to three, and then it will go to four and see which ones are next to it. So and since we're going to number the neighbors. And another way to say that, um, at least in this program, is we're adding them to the queue so that we're going to eventually check them. Okay, so uh, if this one is empty, we want to add it to the queue. So we're going to do um, xq dot push uh, x location minus 1 because that's that one was the empty neighbor and we also need to push the y location to keep in parallel the y coordinate okay so this x y is another place we need to check and we also don't want to say this is empty anymore we want to keep track somehow that we've checked it and what we're going to do is this little trick where we're going to add uh, where that it's coming from so this one's to the left, so we get there from the right. This one's to the left, so we're going to tell it that we got there by going to the left. So we're going to say tiles at x look minus 1 y location um, dot state is equal to tiles at the x location y location dot state plus l. So if we get here from the start, this will say the way that we get to x location minus 1, y location, is from the start, and then we go left. Uh, otherwise, however we got to this location, it'll keep track of how we got to that location, and then we went left to get to the x location minus 1, y location. So the string no longer is saying empty, but it's keeping track of the path that it took to get to this position. And then we're going to do this down here with x location plus 1. But instead of going left, we're going right. And of course here, we're going to change the y values. Oops. x location, y location, minus 1. And we're going up. And finally, in this one, we're going to go. Oh, uh, if it's equal to E, then we'll go down. All the letters we've used are distinct. So uh, we've got L, R, U, and D for left, right, up, and down. E for empty, F for finish, and S for start. So 
the paths are going to work so that it doesn't actually ever add a place that we've already checked. Um, it's only going to add a place that has an E that's empty. So even if it was empty before, but now it's a U, it's not going to add that to our queue because we've already explored it by going along some path and then going up. Okay, so this while loop runs until either the path is found, which would be true if we see an F, or until the queue is empty, which means there's nowhere left to explore. And that will exit this while loop. So we need to decide what to do from there. If it's not the case that the path is found, so if not path found, we're going to say output dot enter HTML equals no solution. Else, that means that we must have found a path, so we're going to put output dot enter HTML equals solved. So currently, x loc and y loc, the x location and y location, are still the cell from which we found the finish. So if we find the finish, um, well, it might add a few more neighbors, but it's not going to move anywhere, and then it's going to exit the loop. So the x location and y location are where we found the finish. And that cell is storing the path for how we got to the finish, because we've changed the state to store that path. So let's use that state to retrace the path and draw the solution from the start to the finish. So we're going to say variable path equals tiles at x location, y location dot state. The path length is going to be path dot length. Um, and then we're going to have another current x location, which will be at the uh, position 0 and a current y location at the position 0, so we're going to start again from the beginning. So the current x and current y are back at the start. And then we just want to run through the string and take the steps according to the state. So for variable i equals 0, i is less than path length minus 1, i plus plus, if Path dot care at i plus one. Oops. Um, equals equals u. We're gonna say current y minus equals one. So we're gonna go up by one. If the path dot care at i plus 1, so the next step is d, then we want to go down by 1. So we're going to say curve y plus equals 1. If path dot uh, care at i plus 1 is r, then we need to go right one, so we're going to say cur x plus equals one. And finally, if path dot care at i plus one is l, then cur x minus equals one. So we'll go left by one. And what I want to do is mark that tile at the current position. So tiles at cur x curve y is going to equal x. So we're going to, uh, oops, that's the state equals x, not the actual title. So dot state equals x. So we're going to mark each tile along the solution with an x. OK, so that just about does it. But one last little detail. Um, up here where we're drawing, we now have a couple of different things going on. So we have the start is green and the finish is red and our empty tiles are gray 
and the walls are blue. But we're also going to have an X along the path. So we need to make up something for X. And we could also put just an else to see where we've explored. So I'm going to make the places where we've explored yellow. That would be um, FF, FF, 0, 0 in hexadecimal. And let's make the solution black. So just solid zeros. Okay, so run this again, and let's see if it is working. No. <laughs> it looks like there was a mistake. Sorry about that. The first time I did this, I had x lock, y lock, and then I'm pushing x, y lock minus 1 into the x queue. This should just be the x location, and then the y location minus 1. And similarly, down here, it should be the, y loca uh, the x location gets pushed, and the y location plus one whenever we're expanding along the x location and y location plus one. Okay, and so now it solves a maze. So So here's a little maze that I just drew up, and watch, it'll actually find a solution through the maze. So I took that path. And now you can start drawing your own mazes. And see that this algorithm will solve the maze. Um, I'm thinking next time I'm going to make it a little bit smarter, so we'll probably use the same code. But uh, if you see here, what it's doing is it's actually exploring everything. Um, not in every maze, but in the, the mazes that I'm drawing here, it's uh, so it explored all the yellow, and then the black line was its solution. Um, so it didn't really need to explore, you know, this whole chunk of the uh, the maze whenever there's no walls at all to find the solution along this wall. So it could have just found the solution by going straight there. Um, so that's what we're going to do next time. Is make the maze finder a little bit smarter.